In the grain lands of Canterbury this year, we've been reaping one of the richest yields in New Zealand's farming history. At no other time have we needed so much grain. Only once before has the harvest promised so well. This crop, the fourth in successive years in this paddock, will give about 60 bushels to the acre. On the richer lands, the army has been helping farmers to bring in 80 bushel crops. Even the light lands have been planted and are giving a profitable harvest. In spite of an acute labour shortage, farmers last year increased their plantings by many thousands of acres. When the crops came in, rich and heavy after a good growing season, army units were sent out to help with the harvest. The farmer was asked to produce more grain. The good season rewarded his fine cooperation. Rain and sunshine worked together to bring the best out of the plains. The harvest became a national enterprise. Production councils and the farmers cooperated to see that the land was used. When the crops came in, soldiers exchanged rifles for hay forks and the grain was gathered plentifully. This year, more land will be planted. 300,000 acres is the aim. The granary of New Zealand feeds the battlefront of the Pacific. Here on board his catch in Wellington is Senor Vito Dumas, lone-handed Argentino yachtsman and recent arrival from Buenos Aires by way of Cape Town. For a moment, Senor Dumas sits at the tiller which has already steered him two-thirds of the way round his native southern hemisphere. Before leaving to complete his circumnavigation, the author skipper autographs copies of his last book of travel for his New Zealand friends. Now our intrepid visitor has another country to write about. He likes it and intends to call in next time he's passing. Vito Dumas sets his sails whilst his vessel is under tow. There's a brisk nor'westerly and it's splendid sailing weather for his eastward course. Now she's under sail and the skipper's below getting his oil skins. The catch is designed to hold her course like this in mid-ocean whilst her captain is being cook or sleeping. Her next port of call is Valparaiso, Chile. Then it's round the horn and home to Buenos Aires. So the little neutral ship slips away from the high coasts of New Zealand on a voyage linking the southern hemisphere. Kiora and hasta la vista.